everybody. Thanks so, so, so much for, for being here. Um, uh, thanks creative, to Creative Mornings for having me and to the History Museum for housing this event. It just feels right because it's a place of brain gain. And here you are to listen to a little bit of brain gain. So before we begin, um, this is as much for me as it is for you, just to take a moment to settle and arrive. <sighs> <laughs> so, I'm Danielle and I will be your guide today on a, first a brief exploration about what is a game and, and why do we play games. And then um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, why I think theater games can save humanity. And then, if, um, if there are enough willing participants from the audience, we will, I will demonstrate a very short uh, theater game. Uh, easy peasy, so if you've never played a theater game before, don't worry. <laughs> so, the word game, it, 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 can, it can be a little bit so if somebody asks you, do you want to play a game? <laughs> You're likely to say no if the who, what, where, why of that game is, 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 is a question. Like if you don't know the person, you know, like what kind of game do you mean? You might be a little bit nervous about saying yes. So, so games can be provocative. They can be dangerous. They could, you know, it, there's such a broad range of what a game is. Or games can be a simple and safe way to demonstrate a complex idea. Now, when I was a child, Games were sometimes stressful because, A, you had to be good at something, whether it was throwing a ball or jumping double dutch or something. Um, you, you could possibly get injured. Uh, games were competitive. I was never really into, into competition, but it was the injury part. You can get not only injure your body, but you can be hurt emotionally playing a game you know there were there were it was a lot of risk so feeling now Jackie mentioned earlier that we all have uh, well not all I mean uh, I I admit I have a game in my pocket on my device I am a sim build it type of gal, <laughs> you know, um, and some of us may be words with friends, you know, you might like words with friends, or you might like, you know, uh, um, like let's slay some zombie games. You know, you, you might have something in your pocket to, to when you have a moment to, to just like escape into this game. Have you ever heard of, um, what is it, M-M-O-R, M-M-O-R-P-Gs? Does anybody know what an M-M-O-R-P-G is? M-M-O-R-P-Gs are massively multiplayer online role-playing games. <laughs> so you can literally be in a game with Millions of people, or maybe thousands, but millions, since the potential, I think some games there are millions of people playing at one time, and you never see them. So what is human interaction? Is it just being there face to face with somebody, eye contact? What, what, what does human interaction mean? Is it, so when you're playing an MMORPG, are you interacting with another human? Yes. No, I don't know. Um, human interaction and communication are, are skills that we can actually lose. I watched a documentary recently and I, I tried to look on my wish, my watch list and find out what was that documentary, but it was about a, a community where uh, the young people were, well, A, they profiled one girl who was 
renting a boyfriend so she can practice having a boyfriend? <laughs> really, yes. And they showed the two of them meeting and they had a couple of meetings and she felt more comfortable about having a boyfriend. And, and they also profiled some young men who, who were a f not even interested in having a girlfriend. They, it was their virtual women friends or in their game and their MMORPGs were more, they could understand them better. They knew what to expect. You know, there's a game. I know what to expect out of these women. We can lose the ability to communicate with each other. So, enter theater games. Now, why theater games? Because, so, back in the day when I was first introduced to a theater game, I was really excited because, A, there was no competition. I didn't have to be good at anything. It was really fun, and when I was young, a game wasn't fun if I wasn't laughing out loud <laughs> and running around, right? So theater games really appealed to me. And you know, as far as getting hurt, you know, that's something that's, that's, that's individual. You, know, you never know you, when, when your feelings are going to be hurt. And um, so I can't speak to theater games not hurting us. But something about games, I want to go back. Something about games that's real important before I talk more about theater games is that theater games, uh, games can improve us. So we can improve our vocabulary, like with words of, with friends. Um, there are lots of brain games, you know, to, to increase your brain power. So we know that brain, uh, games can improve us. So now, why theater games? Actors have, when an actor is on stage, our intention is to portray humanity. It's like um, Stanislavski said, it's like holding a mirror up to nature so that we are able to uh, show you humanity, show us humanity, but wait, I'm also a human. So I have to, I play theater games to practice being human, to be able to portray humanity. Why is this not good for everybody? Especially when we're retreating from that, when we're playing, we're interacting with millions of people, but we're not having the eye contact, we're not having that, that physical contact, we're not in the room with people. So, if games can improve us, then why can't theater games help us to evolve? Because if I'm playing a game that's interactive and, and if I play it often, I'm gonna be, well, the game we're gonna play today, uh, just, just to give you a warning, I'm going to invite a few, any, anybody who's willing, uh, to play a very short ga theater game. It's called Zip Zap Zop, and it is Theater Game 101, right? Now, okay, something else about games. When you're playing games, you get better, right? We evolve, we progress, we get better at games. This is why I play it. So this version of Zip Zap Zop is level one, no previous skills involved. <laughs> so, so if you're thinking, considering it, consider. So the reason Zip Zap Zop is such a great game is because not only is it simple, but it, it requires eye contact. It requires presence and availability. So, for example, another reason why theater games are good for humans is if we practice that presence. I mean, can we? Can you imagine going out into the world and you know everybody that you meet is like present and available for you? Okay, so that would be a little weird, but <laughs> but we can tone it down like like actors do on stage because actors have to be present and available for every even if you're in your dying scene, you have to know everything else that's going on on stage. You have to be present and available because live theater things could change <laughs> in, in a moment, right? So you must be present. So that there that takes practice. So 
And this is not just good for actors, it's good for everybody. So zip, zap, zop is played like this. So you have people in a circle, present and available, and, and one person, so there's, a, it's, it's as if I'm shooting a lightning bolt to the next person. So if I go zip, then that's like energy and there's eye contact. And, and so then that, then that person goes to the next person and goes zap. No, no, zap. Zip. <laughs> <laughs> and then zap. And then zap. So it's like, you know, it's, so not only do you have to find someone's eyes to engage with and give them your energy, but that person has to be ready to receive it as well. So it's a two-way street. So just let that sink in for a moment before we play. And I'm going to check my notes to see if there's any other thing I wanted to say. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, Actors have an intention to practice being better humans. So as we're, as we're playing this game, we are practicing to be better humans because we are practicing engagement. Are there any, is there anyone so far that might be interested in a sample game of Zip Zap Zap? Great, so. Before we begin, let's get some people, six to eight people to make a little circle in, in the center here. Oh, that's more than six to eight people. That's okay, that's okay, you can uh, come, come on up, come on up. <clears throat> so, So a couple of things. The order is zip, zap, zop. And there's also a rhythm to it. So for example, if I go zip. I go zap. Yes. Zop, zop. Yes. Zip. Yes. Zap, zop. Zip. Zap. Zip. Zap. Zip. Zap. Zap. Zip. Zap. 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 Zip. Zap. Zip. Zap. Zap. Zip. Zap. Zap. Zip. That is awesome. That is great, everybody. Thank you so much for existing. So now, now, what was that like? What, first of all, there's, there's catching somebody's eyes, and there's also a being available for somebody's eyes. And, and, and what does that feel like? Does that feel like something that, so I know for some people, eye contact is challenging. And, and I've heard tell from young people that it's sometimes difficult to have eye contact with other people. And perhaps it's happening more so these days. Um, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for, for playing. So, so we can see how, how, and that is just, OK, that is level one of Zip Zap Zop. There are so many variations. It gets faster. We can add jumps. We can add all sorts of things to that game. Um, any, 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 any response to that game and, and how, and, and, and questions or ideas about how theater can improve humanity? Yes. For me, nothing else matters in this game. So focused on receiving and sending mm -hmm. that everything else falls away. Yes, yes. So what she said is that nothing else matters but the sending and receiving. And that's so important for, for us. Now, now, actors intend to portray humanity in, in, in all the ways that humanity can be portrayed. And perhaps it's not something that everyday people want to do, but everyday people do want to communicate with each other. And if we lose that skill, imagine what society would be like.
So not only is theater important, but playing is important. So I can Im I imagine something like zip zap zap being done uh, before a work day, and 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 you know in the office, you know if you're working with people and and you and and you have to interact with these people, how do you come together? You know in the morning with your coffee, get your coffee, have your little bit of snack, and go okay, let's play and let's lock in with each other. Um, I saw a hand raised. Did you have a question? Do it in the oh, should, we should do it in the Senate, right? Uh, that practice of presence and availability. Yes. I have a son who's twelve years old, mm -hmm. and he has—he was very good at looking people in the eye mm -hmm. two years ago, and he's lost it. He'll, so someone will greet him, and he'll look down. Hmm. And. Uh, he was signing up for middle school classes last night, and acting was his first choice. And I thought, okay, mm -hmm. good. Yes. Because like, we're trying to work on this, and he was realizing that that might bridge it. And he, we didn't talk about that. Mm. Yeah, so if you didn't hear, what she said was her 12-year-old son used to be able to have eye contact, and now that's, it's, it's receded a little bit. But he's interested in taking an acting class. now. I highly recommend theater classes, improv classes. There are some good improv classes in, in town. And you don't have to be an actor. You know, it's not just for actors. You know, it's, it's a practice of being human with other humans. So if you, even if, you, if you have ever considered being involved in theater or, or, or theater games, I think, you know, this is an idea. Uh, <laughs> how about doing classes just in theater games? I'm going to consider that. Because, and, you know, so, and, and not call them theater games. Let's call them human games. Games for humans. And something else I wanted to mention, you know, we play certain games when we're young, and when we get older, the types of games we play changes. Like, what are the approved adult games anymore? Why isn't Duck, Duck, Goose still a fun-ass game? You know? <laughs> you know? So I think that, you know, games for humans can be something that adults can feel you know, better or you know, participating in. You had, you had a statement? For years I taught uh, at the university level teaching teachers. Mm -hmm. And I used things like this, theater games, in my classes, both because you know, college classes can be so lecture boring. So in the middle, I just have everybody up doing various things. And then I would teach them to try that in their classrooms instead of the, OK, everyone, now please sit down and be quiet and open you know, instead of that to do whether it was a clapping game or a theater and it was fun and it got all the kids attention and it was so much better than okay sit down and be quiet and mm -hmm. get out your pencils mm -hmm. so and we, I, without knowing what i was doing i was doing theater games. absolutely right and we have no idea how this benefits our brain how this benefits us because again there are skills that we can lose, and we don't even know how we have them or why we have them. So consider doing theater games. Consider taking an acting class or an improv class. Um, if you don't know about theatersantafe.org, it's a website that, um, that tells you about workshops and classes and performances, all things concerning theater. So if you haven't checked out theatersantafe.org, please do and sign up for the newsletter and find out what shows are happening in town and what workshops and classes and stuff are happening. Um, any other ideas or questions? Yes. I'm happy to recommend my improv teacher if anybody wants to know. It's such fun. It's such fun. They yes. Have, yes, there's an improv. <coughs> Yes, yes. And there was a hand over here. Yes. Well, this is sort of personal because I'm going to talk about him. And my husband <laughs> has a cochlear implant. Mm -hmm. And so he's he very hearing impaired, although he can hear. But when people raise their hands to participate in your game, he's 
said, what are we voting on? Ah. Uh, so here's a person who's full of life, who isn't even understanding a word you're saying because of the acoustics in the room or the sound system or whatever the case, mm -hmm. but needs human games more than anything. Mm. May I ask so, something? Take off your microphone. Because your voice is so good, we will all hear you and we'll have much better contact with you. We've got sort of a ghosty voice coming from over there. I'd rather yeah. hear from you. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. Can you try that to see if it works? Um, I could try that. Uh, That's right, maybe it's for the taping or something. But yeah, well, I have two mics on. You're so good at communicating with people, but I'm not getting it. So this is something that you know may seem small, but there is a bigger picture here. And, and perhaps this is something that um, you know, we can create a bigger conversation around because you know, this is something in society that's looming large right now. There's, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, um, concern about what's happening to us um, because of our devices. And I'm not saying that they're bad or wrong, but there's a way that we can create balance and still stay human. Yes. To your point about starting your day, mm -hmm. I, uh, some years ago I worked with an engineering firm in France, mm -hmm. and what struck me is at the beginning of the day people would come into the office and it was an open bay, and every person that came in went around the room and shook hands with everyone, their co-workers, everyone. Mm -hmm. It was just amazing. You know, mm -hmm. and that was the way they started their day at work. Yeah, yeah. It yep. wasn't just like coming in and sitting down. Right. I used to um, teach uh, at a, uh, a, a school, an elementary school, um, middle school, and something that this school, a progressive school, did every morning is um, they did uh, uh, cognitive skill games with the with the students, and you know, you know, like touching your nose and doing all your eye exercises, you know, all those kinds of things <coughs> every morning, and they swore by it because you know it was it got the students together, they were doing things together. And and, and they were um, improving their brain, hopefully waking it up. So doing games, theater games, games for humans, can improve our brains, evolve us. Theater games can evolve humanity. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, everybody, um, for coming. And um, I would love to continue this uh, conversation. Um, if you, you notice at the desk, um, my card is here. If you have my email, if you want to talk more about this, please feel free to email me. Um, I'm in a performance coming up at the, uh, uh, the Santa Fe Playhouse called Flight Plan. Uh, there are cards on the table if you're interested in seeing some theater. Again, please check out theatersantafe.org. Sign up for our newsletter. And thanks for being here.